Hello again, we continue our explanation of RDF schema and OWL. Uh, we learned before what an RDF schema is and it's actually a vocabulary description language and it gives people a way to describe vocabularies and the rest of the stuff that we learned in the last video. I just corrected the uh, uh, I've just corrected the example file. It was 41 in the last video, now it's 42. Now, we hopefully are getting, becoming familiar with what RDF schema is, you know, uh, that um, uh, you know, it gives us the ability to describe variables and we describe them with RDF, i.e. in triples and these triples can be uh, uh, available for querying by Sparkle just like the data itself we learned about the Dublin core that's actually a standard set for basic metadata terms and we saw an example now we just, remind, we just want to remind ourselves that RDF schema actually is itself a vocabulary with a schema whose triples declare facts. So for example, we learned, for example, that um, in RDF schema and RDFS, the one we used before, we have a property called label and a property called comment. Yes, so it is actually itself a vocabulary. It has a property called label and a property called comment, yes? Now, this is similar to what we saw before in the Dublin core schema, which, for example, tell, tell, uh, which has the creator as a property. So, the RDF schema itself has properties, labels, and comments, just like the Dublin core has property creator. That makes sense. That's very simple. I hope that's actually clear. Now, RDF schemas, uh, you know, RDF schema, it actually lets us define new classes of resources. So we. Uh, we, we, if you remember when we had the example, example number 42, when we saw that, uh, uh, when we saw that type, you know, we said that creator is of type RDF, you know, is of type property, is of type RDF property. So th what that means is, as we uh, explained before, that means that um, the creator is actually a member of the RDF property class. Yes. And now with, the RD, with RDF schema, we can actually create new classes. So let's, let's have a look at an example from the book, you know, our usual book, which is this one. This one here. Uh, let's have a, a look at, uh, at some example. Let's go back to the slide. Yeah. So the example is actually an address, address book with names and some other information. And the author here is trying to create, uh, or is going to show us how he can create two classes for the address book one class is called musician and one class called uh, musical instrument so let's have a have a look at the code and try to explain it now the excuse me the um, the address book data looks like this or data set looks like this we have a prefix ab for learning sparkle uh, slash ns address book with our usual dot usual way of creating prefixes. I keep repeating it just to make sure that everyone understands it fully. Uh, and then we have triples, uh, some some individual, some ID. He has a property first name, value Richard. Remember between double quotes that means automatically it's actually a string. Um, last name, postal code, city, all of these properties. Now we'll have a look at how classes can be created for that address book. Well, what we can do here is we can um, use the same prefix for the address book and then we have uh, the RDF and the, uh, the RDFS, our RDF schema and what we say here is we say AB musician, so we have now this subject, we name it musician and we say it's of type class RDFS class so RDFS RDFS the RDF the RDF schema I'm sorry it has something called class and we are saying that musician is of type class remember that we can say RDF hyphen type class or we can say a small a class to say that that's actually is a class these are exactly the same to use the a or to use the RDF type and then we're just adding some more information now using some properties from the RDF schema, RDFS label musician, RDFS comment, and we have some comment and we can add the, uh, the language tag as we learned before. And then another class now, musical instrument with the same um, 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 prefix. And we're saying here that it's actually of 
of type are the first class so these things are exactly equivalent the author here is just using the a as I explained before these things these two things are exactly the same they are equivalent and then here he didn't add any comment he just added just a label from RDFS schema RDF schema from the RDFS to tell us that this is actually a musical instrument but this is how we can create a class by saying it's actually our subject is of type class using the RDF type or the a RDFS class back to our slides now um, of course we can add a lot more data uh, we can assign when we when we declare a class for example we can have a subclass of a class so we can have for example another uh, uh, class here we, and we say it's of type subclass of this class we learn that you can actually watch that you will watch my protege tutorial where I show you how to use that using protege tool protege remember this protege tool you can uh, search that in my uh, list of videos on my playlist now let's have a look at an example example number 044 the turtle, the that turtle file where the author declares a play instrument property now rather than a new class he declares a property now properties properties now they require doma a domain and a range yes yeah, so they require a domain and a range remember this let's just have a look there see how it's done and then I'll go back to the explanation now the author is what he's doing is creating a property is saying that play instrument and he's saying it's of type RDF property yes yeah, so, uh, it's um, um, sort of a member of the RDF property class again we can say a just to repeat myself or leave it like that they are equivalent and then he's adding a comment a label from the RDF schema and now because it's a property usually properties in our context they will have um, domain and range so the domain is the class that they are coming from sort of the subject value and the subject value of that property and the range should always be its sort of object so it needs a subject uh, I'm sorry it needs a domain and a range if I go back to the slides that the RDFS domain property means that if I use this play instrument property in a triple then the subject of the triple should be a class of type musician should be a B musician or maybe an instance of that class yes and if we use it again then the range of this property the RDFS range of this property or this property means that the object of such a triple when I use this property in a triple the subject of such a triple should be a musical instrument or an instance of musical instrument remember that in a triple we have subject property object we have a property now and the property is this one he play instrument it needs a subject and an object if we define its domain and range from the RDFS as we did here then the subject needs to correspond to the domain or the domain needs to correspond to the subject however you want to understand it and the object needs to uh, uh, correspond to the range or the other way around as I said I actually explain this when I show you how to create a simple ontology using protege you can double check in my playlist now remember that we uh, when I mentioned that in this example here we can define even subclasses well if you are familiar with the object oriented uh, uh, concept of dealing with classes subclasses or with, or with all the properties and inheritance and things like that then things can become very very interesting this is why I'm going to stop here and please watch my next videos because they are very important for you to understand the concept of owl of ontologies of in sort of inheritance in our context now because it's actually slightly different than the way it's done in object oriented please watch those videos and I'm sure they will clarify a lot of things thank you very much for watching indeed and I'll see you next time